So here it is, the Mi Gaming Laptop, a laptop that is very hard to get hold of. A lot of stores have been asking ridiculous prices for this because it came out in limited quantity. On eBay, I saw a seller trying to sell one of these for, can you believe it? 1800 US. Now I didn't pay that. This one I paid around about a thousand euros, 1050. It's not the highest spec. That's why it's quite a bit cheaper. I got it from geekbuying.com. Now this one has the NVIDIA GTX 1060. There's also a model that has a much weaker GPU in there, which is the NVIDIA uh, 1050 Ti. That's not as powerful as this one. Mine's the i5. So the i5 7300HQ is the CPU. That's quad core. It doesn't have the hyper threading that we'd see on the higher spec model. So that one's got the i7 7700HQ CPU. Now the SSD is 128 gigabytes, which is not a lot. 8 gigabytes of RAM. You can, of course, upgrade both of those components there. And it has a one terabyte spindle hard drive. All models have that. So I'm not too happy about this. I can see that they've already opened it. Perhaps they've gone in and installed English because this thing comes with Windows 10 and Chinese only. So you're going to either have to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, install a language pack, or do a complete new fresh install. All right, so this box is massive. It's double box, but the box is about twice the size of the Mi Notebook Pros. And there's some padding around it there. It's a little hard to make out on camera, but the box of it's quite nice. You can see the fans here and the cooling, the RAM slots, the SSD. It's like the internals, a layout, a diagram of everything there on the box, which is a nice little touch. Okay, so, oh, nice packaging. This is good. Really well packaged up. Just get that laptop out. Oh yeah, that, that is heavy. That is quite a heavy laptop. So we have a little slip here. This is probably gonna be the warranty card guarantee and things like that. This will probably be all in uh, Chinese. And yes, it is, you can see right there. So that's all in Chinese. It's just going over the layout of the ports and everything like that. And up the top here, of course, the power supply. Should I say power brick? Looks like it is rather large. I'll weigh that in a second with the laptop. So it does have that Mickey Mouse style connector. And the output is 19.5 volts at 9.23 amps. And the plug on it, I expected the two prong US style one. They've put in an Australian New Zealand style plug here. 2.75 kilos. You can't see it currently on the camera, but that's heavy. And then with the power brick, wow, that comes up to 3.25 kilos. So for thickness, it's pretty much exactly 23 millimeters. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so I can see fingerprints already on it. So that's from the seller. I'm not happy that they've already opened this. Okay, so the top of it, this is a alloy here. Feels nice, but as you can see, yeah, prone to fingerprint smudges. I've got this little strip along the top. That is very solid, pressing down on that. There's no real flex there. Just open this up, take a look at that keyboard. Okay, so very nice looking keyboard there. And you can see that you haven't got a numerical keyboard on there, which is a bit of a shame, but I guess I can live without that. So there are those four keys there. So these ones are macro keys that you can customize for assign different in-game buttons to. Uh, this one at the top, I think that is your fan boost. So very similar to say the Windforce fans from MSI laptops, even Lenovo's have that. So you just up the fan RPM to cool it down really quickly. Super large, very nice feeling touchpad. Now this will be a Windows Precision touchpad. Surely it has to be. But you can see what is missing is there is no fingerprint reader up there. So I guess they decided that gamers don't need to have fingerprint security. So testing the flex on that keyboard. It's rather solid, but it does flex in a tiny little bit, just a few millimeters, and then after that, it's very, very firm. Those keys feel good, nice size to them, and they are shaped like the Mi Notebook Pro's keys, that they have a slight indentation to them. So they go in a little bit, and it just feels more comfortable. So have a look at these hinges here. They've done them slightly different. but it does feel really firm. So that's a positive there. Overall, this build quality is excellent. And you can see at the front here, we do have the Xiaomi logo, the Mi logo right there, but it's quite discreet because it's in black. It doesn't really stand out or anything. This is one thing so far they really love about this laptop. There's no crazy looking logos. There's no massive green or red colors on it. So that bezel isn't too bad. It's a matte 1080p display. Unfortunately, no G-Sync. 
And it does have this rubber trim all around the edge here, so that's another good thing, a good sign to have. So that's gonna stop it from scratching up on the palm rest here. And you can see we've got two dual array microphones there, the front facing webcam with a status LED. Just wanted to point out that the palm rest is actually made out of this hard ABS style plastic. So maybe that's for temperatures so it doesn't get really hot so it stays cool while they've done this or just for wear and tear so it's gonna last a little bit longer. This is a sticker of course, this is just some propaganda there from Nvidia so you can remove that if you want to. Ah, so this strip along here, this is actually for our wireless AC and Bluetooth reception. That's why they've done this. Looking at the underside now, so everything's screwed in place with screws there. We've got this RGB lighting either side, that's to get that surround effect lighting that a lot of gamers like, that sort of thing. I'm not personally into that, but it's still good to have that on here, of course. Two, three watt downwards firing speakers. Not too keen on that location. Downwards firing normally doesn't sound that great, but judging by the Mi Notebook Pro speakers, those ones are quite good, so they should be a little bit better. Two rubber feet here at the front. They've got a nice bit of height to them. This backing is plastic. And we've got a huge rubber foot at the top, rather high, so that's gonna give us a bit of height for the intake here. And I really love what they've done with the back of this. It's exposing, you can see the two fans there for cooling. So one is for the GPU, the other, of course, is for the CPU. And this whole thing is basically one massive intake vent, and it should make cleaning quite easy. It is removable, I can see. We do have some screws on here. I don't know if that's actually just to pull this off or the whole thing off, but we'll take a look at the internals. So there are a total of nine screws to undo. There's one that's hidden under this little plastic tab here at the top. And then we just have to literally rip up this plastic. It's just clipped in place with those little clips. So use a pry tool. And here we have the internals. So here's the battery. It's only 55 watt hours, which is really small considering the kind of power that this packs in here. So I don't imagine it's gonna have very good battery life. Most gaming laptops don't. So down below you can see the speakers with a little bit of foam around them to stop any vibrations, which is good. Build quality so far is excellent. It's top notch, 2.5 inch hard drive. But what is really interesting to note, we do have a secondary NVMe slot right there. Now that's good to see here, but I don't see how this is gonna fit with the hard drive in here. So it looks like you have to remove the hard drive and then you can put a 22 by 80 SSD in this place. Now the SSD we've got in here is a PM 871B, I have never seen this model before. Now the double data rate for RAM, it's housed under this shielding here. And you can see they've just allocated one lot of RAM there. So you can upgrade and put an extra eight gigabytes of RAM in here, which is what I'm going to do. And take a look at that cooling. It does look really, really good. So looking at the rear now, we've got two exit vents exiting out the back and also the other exit vents are on the side of it. And the ports here on the back. So we've got uh, type C, this is USB 3.1, USB 3 port, HDMI 2, and gigabit LAN. Right hand side, another exhaust vent there, USB 3.1 and a SD card reader. Now hopefully this SD card reader is also wired up via a USB 3 hub. And finally on the left hand side, exhaust vent, two USB 3 ports, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the microphone jack as well there. Okay, so it looks like it is in Chinese, so I'm not too sure why the seller had to open the box up. If it's in Chinese and they haven't installed English. So first impressions of that screen, it does look really good. Matte coded 1080p IPS. And those viewing angles, they look decent. Now I just wanted to also demonstrate, this is the furthest back the screen will go. So it's not amazing, that angle there. Okay, so this is where things are gonna get difficult because it's all in Chinese. This is their basic control center, like you'll see on MSI laptops, the Dragon Control Center, and you can just get a rough idea now of the GPU, the CPU, what's happening there, the memory use. That's all pretty straightforward. This, I don't know what that is. Oh, this is setting up those macro key, the shortcuts on the side there, so you can assign uh, five of them. But of course, it's all in Chinese, that's gonna make things quite difficult. I don't know what this is talking about. Alt F4. Okay, so there's just some shortcuts there. And then our keyboard, perhaps. This is the keyboard. Okay, no, this is the side RGB lighting, how to set this up. So hopefully when I move the operating system over to English, this will then translate over to English, but I'm not holding my breath for that to happen. And the same goes for the keyboard as well. So these are the controls for the four different zones that it has to set up the RGB lighting. 
Again, you're gonna need to know Chinese, I feel here. So it's got different modes. It looks like you can do like a wave effect, pulsing. And I don't think it's gonna to take too long to actually learn how to adjust this. Here's a quick demonstration of the RGB side lighting. So you can just tweak the different colors. I'm just cycling through now. So you've got like 16 million colors, I think it is. It's not actually quite as bright as I thought. And a quick peek at the back lit keyboard. Of course, I've got to show you this. After 13 seconds, I think it is, it times out. You can see it turns off automatically. And you can go through and adjust the different zones or you can set it all to the same exact color if you wanted to. So the screen is looking excellent. Matte coated. I definitely think this is a better screen than the Mi Notebook Pro one, especially when it comes to glares and things because of the anti-glare coating that's on here. It's going to make it a bit better for gaming too, but color reproduction and things look good. I do have my Spider Pro. I will measure this later on, not in this video, in the full review I will give you the stats of the screen and what the color reproduction is like and the maximum brightness and everything like that. But so far, just with my first hands on with it, an excellent panel that Xiaomi has selected for this. So just a couple of things here to point out with the hardware, so I am benchmarking that SSD and it's only a SATA 3 SSD unfortunately, so if you want the faster drive, NVMe, which is very similar to a Samsung 960 Evo that they're using in it, it is the uh, PM uh, 961, then you have to go for the more expensive model, of course. So this model that I have has the i5, as I mentioned at the start, the 7300HQ. So that's a quad core, and it doesn't have hyper-threading. So that's why it's not listed in there eight times. Now the wireless is Intel's wireless AC8265. This is the same chipset in the Mi Notebook Pro. This is a very good chipset, but not, of course, as fast as the 9000 series. Those ones are way over a gigabit. And speaking of gigabit there, so we've got the real tech, that's our gigabit LAN. And then the switchable graphics here, so NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060, that's the reason to get this model, and the Intel HD 630. Now the easiest way to get yourself up and running in English, the fastest way, and it's not actually that expensive, off eBay you can buy a Windows 10 Pro key for literally 5 US dollars, or even less now, they're crazy cheap. What you need to do now is just to right click the menu there at the bottom and then click on this here though. So the two, the thing that says Y there basically, two Chinese symbols, Y, and this will bring you into our Windows settings or the Windows information. Then you need to click on this link right here. Then you'll see the key icon and this is where you add your Windows 10 key. So you add that in and then you need to add your language pack, which for me obviously is going to be English and then everything will be in English and you retain Xiaomi software and the rec recovery partition as well, it's still there. So I installed Windows 10 Pro and then I installed English and once you do that you need to do a reset. So everything's now in English but one thing that didn't translate over, at least they don't have an English option with the application, is that Mi Gaming Center. So let's have a quick listen to those speakers. Just a preview here, now we do have Dolby's Atmos sound tweaking software. Both of the speakers are 3 watts. But this time around, they're not Infinity Harman speakers, so they do sound a little bit different to me. And I've noticed that they don't seem to have the same level of bass as the Mi Notebook Pro, which is a shame. And they should actually be a little bit more punchy, I feel. But saying that, the volume is really good. I'll give you a sample of them right now. So both have loud speakers, good speakers on, especially the Mi Notebook Pro. It's quite a bit slimmer, but to me, it actually sounds just a little bit better. And side by side with the Mi Notebook Pro, you can see how much slimmer that laptop is. It's a fantastic laptop, that one. I really do love it. Now, I've been typing on both of these keyboards, and I happen to think that the Mi Notebook Pro keyboard is actually a little bit better to type on because it got better spacing on those keys. Just to comment on that touchpad, it's excellent Windows Precision drivers, the surface of it is nice and smooth, and as you can see, it's very large as well, really nice to use. And a gaming benchmark, this one is Rise of the Tomb Raider, and you can see almost 70 frames per second on average on the very high preset, so this is good, this GPU can handle 1080p just fine, and take a look at the RAM use with this game as well, it neared at one point almost 10 gigabytes, so now you understand why I decided to add 8 gigabytes of RAM more.
So Sydney Bench R15, this is just finishing up. So there's the score, 470 CB. Yes, rather low. And that's because it's just the i5 7300 HQ. If you want better performance, get the i7 model, of course. So even though this is just my unboxing and hands-on first impressions video, we'll show you a couple of benchmarks. So here is Geekbench 4. It's a little lower than I expected. Normally this score should be over 4,000 and this around about 11,000, but overall not too bad. I think Windows had some tasks going on in the background. And that is probably why. So here's the OpenCL score. This is the GPU, the Intel GPU integrated one, uh, 20,000. And here of course is the GTX 1060 with the six gigabytes of RAM. So a few more details now on the GPU. So obviously this is the more powerful model, GPU wise that is. It's got the GTX 1060 with the six gigabytes of RAM, Samsung RAM, and you can see the shaders. So it's got the CUDA cores, 1280 of them. And there's the memory bandwidth, our boost clocks. And in the background right here, this is Firestrike. So it's a 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark. You can run this on your own PC and compare the scores. So as I mentioned, this button here at the top, which I keep accidentally hitting when I want to hit escape, is our fan boost button. So let's just check out and see how loud it really gets with this. So get ready for takeoff. So I will quickly show you the thermals. Here's the GPU. So the GTX 1060 with a six gigabytes of RAM has not gone over 66 degrees. This is after two hours of pushing it hard and only about half an hour of that was gaming. But I'll be testing this out thoroughly in my gaming review and the full review, of course. And let's have a look at these CPU cores. So not one of them has gone over 70 degrees. This is really good. So that's part of the reason why it does weigh quite a bit, 2.75 kilos over other 15.6 inch laptops because they've got a little bit more copper in here, but they've done their homework. The cooling on this so far seems to be excellent. All right, so let me just quickly recap here. So the Palmer is made out of plastic. We've got a large touchpad, really quite good to use. Now the keyboard, it's taking me a while to get used to it. I'm accidentally hitting the escape key because of these configurable custom keys here. So you can set that up like macros, I think it is, or assign different um, setup to that whatever. But the problem is it's all in Chinese. So this to me, of course, is kind of useless. I would have rather had the keyboard spaced out a little more. Just in my first hands on, it just doesn't feel as comfortable to type on. Maybe it's because I'm so used to the Mi Notebook Pro, which has the individual key spaced out a little bit more there. But apart from that, a really decent keyboard, of course, it's got the different RGB zones on here. We've got those RGB strip lights down the side too that I'm not really too fast with that. I don't care if it doesn't have it or not. What I do like is the fact that the lid here doesn't have any logos on it whatsoever. So it doesn't have a stupid dragon logo or some big flames or something like that, which is great. So you can actually use this, I feel, for business use or something a little bit more serious without attracting too much attention to it. You just turn off, if you can figure it out in the settings that is, how to get rid of all the RGB and you turn it off and it looks then quite plain. So the exit vents at the back, I actually think they could actually, it feels like when I put it in the fan mode, this is the intake vents and the heat comes out of the side here. So I'm not too fond of that because the heat coming out of the side, it heats up your hand. If you're left or right handed, either way, it's gonna heat your hand up there. So don't really like that. Uh, also to mention the hinge, very good. So metal on the top and plastic on the bottom. I do like the way they have done this though. This is excellent. So plenty of room there for cooling and cooling so far looks really, really good. Temperatures have not actually gone over about 75 degrees so far, my initial testing. And when you use that cooler booster mode, or AKA liftoff turbo afterburner mode, turn that on now so you can hear it again. Super loud, and it's pumping out air either side. Really, really loud. Just as loud as the MSI GT60 I once owned that sounded like a jet engine, and you're about to go take off an aircraft carrier or something like that. So it is looking good. The screen, very nice. Uh, there's not really much in the area of complaint about it, but I can criticize Xiaomi for a couple of things that I feel they should have released this with an eighth generation CPU. So they should have had the 8750H in here with six cores, but they're probably gonna revise and add that later on. Now the pricing of this, it is very expensive. So it's a risky buy really. Even though Xiaomi's build quality is top, this is top build quality, better than say MSI, better than Acer, 
and Dell, uh, similar kind of build quality there to a Dell, but then you have a look at your local market, something with a GT 1060 in it, GTX 1060, and then the CPU as well, the i5, you'll find for so much less. So it's, you really have to take that into consideration. So it's an expensive laptop. It is also heavy. It is 2.75 kilos for a 15.6 inch laptop. So it's a trade-off they have made with extra cooling pipes in here they've put in here. So the thermals I think are gonna be great. Now I will have a full gaming test review of this. So I'll go through a lot of titles. We'll keep an eye on the thermals and the frame rate. So keep an eye out for that, hopefully coming out maybe within a week or so, and then my full final review. Now if you haven't seen my reviews and my videos of the Mi Notebook Pro, this one here, I really like. Now this is about 800 US versus about 1000 US. So this laptop to me is more for business people because it's got a fingerprint reader in here, very good touchpad as well, slightly better keyboard. Sound on this one as well from my test, I find the sound to be a little bit better but this has really good sound on this. So this notebook is still one of my absolute favorites from Xiaomi. I think they really aced it with this one. There's not really much I can complain about this apart from maybe the lack of Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 3 that this doesn't have. So check out my reviews of that one. They're up here and here. And if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe to the channel for more up and coming with the Me Gaming laptop here. Bye for now.